Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI Frontier series, a global collaboration between Reuters Plus and KPMG. I'm your host, Nadira Tudor, and in this episode, we'll be exploring the numerous ways AI is reshaping the energy sector, an industry that faces the trilemma of affordability, reliability, and sustainability. I'm delighted to be joined by two KPMG executives and state-owned energy company ESB Group. We'll start this conversation in London, UK, with KPMG's Anish Day. Anish, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. As KPMG's Global Head of Energy, Natural Resources and Chemicals, how do you see AI being used to address the energy trilemma? So, uh, you know, despite the economic ups and downs, uh, we've seen energy demand grow quite substantially through the years. And as we stand at the cusp of our AI revolution, it's actually uh, the truth continues. In fact, it gets reinforced at this time. So we are seeing a massive amount of energy demand coming for economic reasons, but particularly for the uh, growth of AI and the data centers which feed uh, into the AI boom. But the challenge is that it has to be uh, secure, it has to be affordable, and it has to be sustainable. And we do know that we are on a carbon budget, which may, may have already exceeded. So as a consequence, we need to find new forms of energy uh, which is secure and sustainable and also affordable because there is an affordability challenge on energy as well. Fortunately, we have a situation where the problem can also be a solution. So the boom of AI is causing energy demand to rise, but AI can also help in finding cleaner forms of energy at scale, uh, which has been the kind of the holy grail for the world for the at least for a couple of decades. Thinking about how the problem can also be the solution, as you put it, KPMG's report outlines three phases of AI adoption. What are they and what do they mean for companies in the sector? So it's three phases between enable, embed and evolve and, and they're self-explanatory in terms of terms, right? Uh, and, and, and what those terms mean. Uh, but, you know, in practice, it also means that companies have to actually make some choices around uh, their operations on how, where they, how long they want to evaluate, what they want to evaluate, uh, how they want to embed uh, technologies into AI technology into their operations and then go to the next level of evolution. Especially as you go forward in the evolution curve, the possibilities are immense. But then it's a learning curve. And the reality is that different kinds of organizations have different learning curves, but even different parts of the organizations have different learning curves. So what you can see in the frontline uh, customer facing segment can be quite different from the back office. So that's where it is a, it's a learning process. And that's why we in KPMG have a framework which helps uh, clients go through that learning process in a very structured manner to really gain out of AI in the, in the truest, in the fullest form. And what should energy companies prioritize to maximize the return on their AI investments? Well, the possibilities are immense. The number of use cases are huge. So what we uh, do suggest the basis of our conversations with you know, senior leaders and CEOs in the sector is to take a full value chain view to make sure that you're capturing the possibilities across uh, that the evaluation phase is actually looking at the, all the possibilities which exist in the organization and the various parts of the organization, and then you make your choices. Now, there might be choices which allow for pure leapfrog opportunities. Uh, for example, new connections in a utility. You can bring it down from weeks to uh, minutes. And that not only means cost savings, it also means high level of customer service, which uh, you know, utilities always aspire for, but it's hard for them to get. AI enables that. At the other end, you can have corporate functions where there are incremental gains, 30%, 40% gains in the individual operations, but because uh, there are, the number of transactions are very high, the net gain can actually be, the overall bottom line impact can be very high. So it, it's, it's actually horses for courses. It depends on what you're playing at. Uh, you can get leapfrogging opportunities, but also large incremental opportunities, which mean something very significant for the bottom line. Thanks, Anish. You've really set up the discussion perfectly. I'd like to bring in Mary O'Connor from ESB now, who joins us from Dublin, Ireland.
Hello, Mary. Good to see you. Hi, Nadira. Lovely to be here. Now, Anish just highlighted that many organisations in the sector are still in the early phases of AI adoption. How has AI changed things at a major utility company like ESB, with a history dating almost 100 years? Yes, indeed, Nadira. Um, 2027 will be our 100 year anniversary and we're very much looking forward to celebrating it. I suppose the big change that AI has caused is, is the potential it offers. Net zero is hugely challenging for any energy company and it's obviously broader than the energy organisation itself. And I really see AI as being the secret sauce in our ability to meet the challenges of net zero. And that's in, a, in a internal services and productivity perspective, but also in customer engagement and in how we enable our customers to transition their own lives to decarbonised living, and also in terms of how we operate the businesses and manage our assets. I like the idea of AI being the secret source to net zero. In terms of addressing the energy trilemma, how can AI help? I suppose we've, we've seen a general uplift in productivity, like I suppose any sector, not just the energy sector, where things like Copilot and Copilot Web Chat are um, offering benefits in terms of productivity. ESB was the first organisation on the island of Ireland to roll out Copilot, and we are seeing strong benefit there with over 80% utilisation amongst our 660 licences. We're also seeing very good traction on Copilot Web Chat as well. Also things like DevSecOps and using AI um, to transform that and generally um, improve customer engagement. We've done things like sentiment analysis and churn analysis uh, using AI. But then if you look at our um, sector in particular and where AI can offer benefits, we have some lovely deep use cases across the value chain. Things like using AI in, in wind analysis uh, to fine-tune settings of our, of our blades and our turbines. We use AI in hydro to judge the, and forecast the inflow of water to the dams. We've used AI in smart metering using Microsoft Cognitive Services to judge the quality of meter installations. We've also used it in vegetation management and in other things like our supervisor virtual office and our design virtual office. So lots of really deep use cases across the value chain as well as general productivity uplift. Clearly then, Mary, there have been great successes, but perhaps you could share some of the challenges you've come across. Well, I think the first challenge is that of a culture challenge, and I suppose culture shift is, is often um, a key aspect of, of any significant transformation. And if you think of the energy sector, we've always been very much relied upon to safeguard large, long-lived assets. And it's always been about availability and reliability and zero risk and risk management, etc. The challenges of today are very different, really, with a much... Um, a really hectic pace of change and then the need to see data as, as a key asset. Also, the, the need to see digital technologies as, as, as solutions, just as much as, as physical um, engineering solutions are part of, of this. So that culture shift is, is a significant shift for any organisation. And, you know, particularly one, if you, if you take ESB uh, set up in, in 1927, it's a lovely example of where we're making that culture shift. The third challenge uh, is data and uplifting data and the quality of data and taking strong approaches to data management and uh, data governance. And then there's digital dexterity and di digital capability, the need to uplift that amongst, I think, the entire population within the organisation, all teams and all people, but also amongst our leadership cadre. We measure and monitor our leadership digital dexterity and we support them in, in uplifting that digital dexterity, whereby they're becoming more comfortable and more confident in creating the right environment here to identify the opportunities that technology and data can bring to enabling their business strategies. And where do you think AI will have the greatest effect on the sector in the short term? I don't think it'll be any one thing, really. Um, I think it'll be more the combination of technologies and data. Um, obviously, agentic AI and the more recent developments in AI offer huge potential, but only when they're combined with traditional AI and combined with, with good approaches to data. Um, 
also other technologies like cloud, but also if you think of technology in a broader sense and think about how it's it's evolving today, it's it's very different. It's evolving whereby different technologies are building upon each other, overlapping, um, where solutions are, are using a combination of discrete technologies together, also combined with societal trends like uh, social media and, um, and whatever else. Um, I think also for the energy sector to consider technology in the broadest sense, like energy technology, the engineering sphere, operational technology, IoT, and consider the full gamut of technology uh, in terms of, of the, the art of the possible. That's probably going to be the key game changer, I, I feel. We'll round out our discussion today in Houston, where KPMG's Angie Gilday has been listening. Hello, Angie. Hello, pleasure to be here. Now, Mary mentioned numerous specific operational challenges that are being addressed by AI. As the US sector leader for energy, natural resources and chemicals at KPMG, how are forward-thinking energy companies restructuring their operations around the new technology? Well, that's an excellent question. I think they're doing a couple of things. Um, the first thing that they're doing is they're taking a look at their current workforce operating models and they're really assessing which job functions and which roles could best be augmented or even served uh, better by AI. And they're starting to make changes with those job roles now to, to be in preparation for the continued change. The second thing that they're doing is they're really setting up an organization structure that can allow for the trusted implementation of AI. And by that I mean they're setting up structures for uh, enterprise-wide governance frameworks and, um, and security operations to make sure that the AI is deployed safe and effectively. One concern we've heard repeatedly throughout this series, including from Anish earlier, reflects exactly what you've just mentioned there, safe, effective and responsible AI deployment. How can energy companies balance caution with innovation? I think the first thing that a company can do is really set the guardrails and boundaries for how AI is, is deployed. Um, it's an important balance between letting people play with the technology and be innovative in, in terms of how they're using it, but also make sure that it's uh, deployed effectively. And one of the most effective ways of doing that is through this, the um, creation of governance committees. So you've got uh, cybersecurity along with perhaps legal, um, technology and the business all coming together and really being thoughtful about how the AI is used and being proactive in thinking about um, future implications of the technology. Thinking about those future implications of AI, KPMG's report spotlights agentic AI and autonomous systems as a pivotal evolution for the energy industry. How might these transform the sector? Well, I think autonomous AI is really probably one of the most exciting opportunities to transform the energy sector in a couple of ways. Um, the first way is through making sure we continue to provide safe, reliable, affordable energy to the planet. And using agentic and autonomous AI allows us to do that. It allows us to um, develop and, and create energy without being so dependent on individual uh, workers out in remote locations where many of the energy products are developed. It helps us from a safety and security standpoint to make sure that we're catching potential issues before they compound and, and provide some type of health safety or environmental incident. And I think it's allowing um, operators to, to develop energy at a lower overall operating cost, which then translates to more affordable energy for consumers. How is the sector addressing the concern that AI consumes so much energy? Well, it's certainly one of the biggest challenges uh, we face in the U.S. And I think uh, 
AI and utilizing AI requires an incredible amount of energy demand. It takes approximately 10 times the power uh, for one AI chat GPT search as it does for a Google search. And so the amount of energy required to power this is, is really something that we haven't seen in decades. But I also think that utilizing AI presents an opportunity for us to be more efficient in our energy um, consumption. And so we've seen use cases uh, in the US where um, companies have employed AI to reduce the overall energy demand required for their operations by upwards of 40 to 50%. So I think while using AI takes an incredible amount of, of energy to power, it also presents an opportunity to really significantly reduce the energy um, that is required um, by providing overall opportunities for energy efficiency. And finally, Angie, looking ahead, how will a successful AI implementation reshape the landscape in the coming years? Well, I think it's a really uh, important that as we deploy AI, we do so in a very thoughtful manner. This, this uh, landscape is changing so quickly. It's really important to have those governance frameworks set up so that we're deploying it in a responsible way. But once companies get comfortable with how they, um, how they use AI, I think the possibilities are, are endless. It's going to uh, really transform the way that we design our facilities facilities in our equipment. I think it's going to transform how we operate the grid um, and it's going to transform the workforce in terms of how effective they're able to be at, uh, at solving problems and, and providing the energy for our planet. Thank you Angie and many thanks to Mary and Anish for their contributions too. That concludes our exploration of AI in the energy sector. Do join us again for another episode of AI Frontiers. Thank you.